Praise the Lord from Pastor Strader at Lighthouse Church. Thanks for connecting with us through our podcast. Our prayer is that it's a blessing to you as we try to reach, equip, and mobilize Jesus' name disciples in Apache Junction, Arizona, and the surrounding region. Enjoy today's podcast and come back often. God bless you. We love you. Can we clap our hands up to heaven today? Someone shout hallelujah. And one word, what you're saying is praise the Lord. Hallelujah is hallelujah in the Greek means praise Lou is you and Yah, short for Yahweh, praise the Lord. So in one word, when you shout hallelujah, what you're saying is praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord above my problems. Praise the Lord above my situation. Come on, praise the Lord above your sickness. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, in in the middle of adversity, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, I wonder if you could shout that with me today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Man, I love what I feel in this house today. There's such a powerful move of God that's here today. Amen. My goodness. I'm excited to see what the Lord is going to do today. Are you glad that you showed up to the house of the Lord where miracles happen, signs and wonders happen? Amen. The Bible says Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. That means if he healed you yesterday, that means he can heal you today. If he delivered you and he saved you, that means he's still the same God today. He doesn't change. Uh, Come on. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't change according to your problems or your circumstance. He's still the same God. Amen. Amen. One more time. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? We love and appreciate your pastor and his and first lady. We love the Strader family. We appreciate them. They're the epitome of Christians. I can honestly say that your pastor and, and first lady are the epitome of what Christians all are about. They really are. And I, we appreciate their friendship. And we appreciate the invitation to be with you today. So I was talking to the Lord this week and just trying to hear from the Lord what he wanted to speak to you. Uh, amen. hallelujah come on hallelujah somebody be obedient to the Holy Ghost come on the gifts of the spirit are trying to operate right now come on if you feel that just let it go Step out in faith in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord today? Amen. I feel like the gifts of the Spirit want to operate. God wants to do something today in this house today. Amen. I'll be turning your attention to Genesis chapter 22. Pardon me. Genesis 26, starting in verse number 12, going down to 22. Amen. I know you don't really know who we are. But the fact of the matter is, is, you know, it really is not about us. It's about Jesus. It's about everything that we do. It's all about him. Amen. I was 19 years old when I came into this. What I mean when I said I came into this, I meant to the church. If you grew up in church, can you raise your hand? If you grew up in this. Amen. What a blessing. What a blessing that you didn't have to experience the tragedy of living in the world, in a hopeless world. 
But you got to live this thing and be a part of it since you were born. See, I, I didn't have the privilege to, to experience what you experience every single week. I got into church when I was 19 years old, and I was addicted to drugs when I was 16. I was a full-blown drug addict by 16 years old. I was a full-blown alcoholic by 16 years old. I, I didn't have the privilege of knowing the God that you worship every single day. Uh, matter of fact, I dealt with depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts. Uh, uh, I don't have enough fingers on my hands and toes uh, on my feet to number the times I try to take my life. But can I tell you, when I was 19 years old, I was desperate. I was thirsty for something real. But I'm thankful that I found a God, that his name was Jesus, that he saved me, that he redeemed me that he sanctified me amen on him glory to God glory to God so if you feel if you if you hear when I preach and you you're gonna find out why I get loud and why I get crazy because I wasn't scared when I got crazy for the world so I'm not gonna be scared when I get crazy for Jesus amen I wasn't scared of getting loud in the clubs so I'm not gonna get scared of being loud for Jesus Amen. When I was lost out of my mind, he picked me up. He found me when I was in my lowest part. And he picked me up and he put me on solid ground. Amen. 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 So if I have you here in a little while, you're going to see why I preach the way I preach. And, uh, and, and you're going to see why I get excited about this because this is real. This is real. What you and I have is real. Look to your neighbor and say, what you have is real. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Strader and Sister Strader, for having us. Amen. I want to turn your attention to Genesis chapter 26, starting in verse number 12. As I was talking to the Lord, I just felt an unction of the Holy Ghost. That God has a word for this congregation today. And I want to do my I want to do my best to get out of the way and allow the Lord to speak and allow the Holy Ghost to move today. Amen. If you just give me your hearts and open up your ears so the Lord can speak to you. I pray that you just give me your hearts for about 30 minutes and allow the Holy Ghost to minister to you. Amen. Uh, don't, don't don't allow walls of distraction. Uh, don't 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 lie. I've been doing this a long time and, it, and 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 when you when you get somebody new in the pulpit, sometimes you want to try to figure out the man of God. You try to figure out where he's going, but I pray that you just open up your ears to what the Spirit wants to say to you today. Amen. Don't try to figure me out because it's not about me, but I believe that the Lord has a word for you. I believe God wants to do something supernatural in your life today, in this congregation, and in this city, and in your family, and in your ministry. If you just open up your ears and hear what the Spirit of the Lord wants to say unto the church, I believe God is going to do something powerful today. Amen. Genesis chapter 26, starting in verse number 12, and then we'll be going to first, uh, Second Peter chapter 2, starting in verse number 17. If you're there, say amen. amen. Then Isaac sowed in that land and received in the same year a hundredfold. So I'm going to say a hundredfold. And the Lord blessed him, and the, man waxed, and the man waxed great and went forward and grew until... And grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and possessions of herds. And the Philistines envied him. You can't tell me that you're not on hell's radar. Hell's been watching the revival that's happening in this congregation. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. You cannot tell me that hell does not recognize what God is doing in this church. In your life, in your ministry, in your marriage. Amen. The Bible says the Philistines envied what, was, what God was doing in the life of Isaac. Verse 15. For all the wells which his father's servants had digged in the days of Abraham his father. The enemy, the Philistines, had stopped them and filled the earth. And Amalek said unto Isaac, Go from us, for thou art much mightier than us. And Isaac departed thence and pitched his tent towards a valley of Giar and dwelt there. And Isaac did again. Someone say, digged again. He digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham. You have to take in consideration that the first one the servants digged. Isaac did not dig it, but the servants did. 
But in verse number seven, seven, uh, verse number 16, the Bible says that Isaac began to dig again of his father's well. The Philistines had stopped them and filled them with earth. And Amalek said unto Isaac, go from us, for thou art much mightier than Isaac. De departed thence and pitched his tents toward the valley of Gear and dwelt there. And verse 18, and Isaac digged again the wells of water which they had digged in the days of Abraham, his father. For the Philistines had stopped them after the death of Abraham. And he called their names after the names by which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants digged in the valley and found there a well of springing water. Somebody say a well of springing water. And the herd men of Gear did strive with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, The water is ours. And he called the name of the well of Isaac because they strove with him or argued with him. And they digged again another well and strove for that one also. And, for they, and, and they argued on that one also. And because that, he called that name of Sitna, that well Sitna. And he removed from thence and digged another well. And for they that strove with him did not. And he called the name of that well Rebototh. And he said, for now the Lord hath made room for us, and we shall be fruitful in this land. Come on, 2 Peter verse 17 really quick. 2 Peter verse 2, 17 says, there are wells without waters, clouds that are carried away with a temperance, to whom the mist of the darkness is reserved forever. There are wells without water. For a little while, with the help of the Holy Ghost, I want to preach to you about the wells of revival. The wells of revival. Turn to your neighbor and say, the wells of revival. Amen. Can we clap our hands one more time? Can we lift up our hands and ask the Lord to speak to us? Open up our ears. Father, I take authority over every spirit of distraction, doubt, and hindrance in this service. I release the gift of faith right now in this congregation. God, I release the gifts of the Spirit to be in operation. God, through the gifts uh, and the fruit of the Spirit, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, we pray that your will will manifest on this earth as it is in heaven. Uh, in the name of Jesus. I'm going to say in the name of Jesus. And you may be seated. Amen. The wells of revival. Amen. When we read Genesis chapter 26, we read that Isaac began to multiply in the land. The Philistines, the enemies begin to see that Isaac begin to grow, that Isaac begin to expand, that Isaac begin to move in a place that was not known to them. And they begin to get scared. Why? Because they realize if they stay in this land and they begin to grow the way that they've been growing, they're going to grow so great that they're going to overpower us. So we got to get them to a place where we move them out of our land. So the Philistines begin to stop the wells that Abraham's uh, uh, servants begin to dig. And they begin to stop the wells. And Isaac says, you know what? That's fine. I, I will go where God is leading me to go. And I will go and I will dig the wells that my father digged. Amen. Uh, can I tell you today that off the offset of this service that we cannot rely on the generation before us uh, for revival. But God is counting on you and I to dig some old wells uh, that the hell try to come cover up that hell try to put dirt over it and God says are you willing to dig again for revival see Isaac went to a land that he wasn't familiar with that meant he was uncomfortable that means he he didn't have the comfort of everyone else but Isaac went to a land that he had no security but the only thing that he had was that God told him just go forward just go forward. And the Bible says that Isaac began to dig again. And he found a well. He found some water in that well. And because he found some water, the enemy says, you know what? Uh, we got to stop them because they got a source of life. Uh, they got hope and we got to keep on pushing them forward until they, they're no longer can be planted and start growing and becoming great. They were fearful that they were growing and multiplying. So they begin to have a dispute off that well that Isaac fell. And he says, you know what? We're going to take this well as well. Isaac says, that's fine. And they, and they go forward and they dig another well. And in that second well, they find contention. Somebody say contention. contention. 
That's where, that's where the enemy began to fight them and they began to fight back a little bit because they got tired of being pushed around and, and every time they dug the well, the enemy would come and try to possess that well. But Isaac says, you know what? No, we're going to contend for this one. We're going to fight for this one. You're not going to have this territory. You're not going to have this revival because uh, you, you might have you might have stopped us in previous years, but in 2023, uh, we're going to see God move like we never seen God move before. Uh, come on, is that anybody's prayer in 2023 that devil you might have stopped us in 2022 uh, but i can see some wells being digged uh, in the spirit of revival that god says i want to pour out my spirit uh, upon all flesh uh, but are you willing to dig beyond measure That's good. Come on. amen and isaac says you know what we're going to contend and when isaac started realizing you know what they're not going to give in i'm going to go and i'm going to find another well and i'm going to dig another well I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do it because I want revival. I'm willing to, I'm willing to go through the labor that it takes to build a well and to dig a well for revival because I want us to have enough space to see God move. So the third well that they begin to dig, the Bible says that the enemy did not fight them. They contended, argued off the first one, contended on the second one, on the third well that they did, that they began to dig. The Bible says in that well, they found water. Somebody say water. They found water in that well. And the Bible says that Isaac looked at that well and says, you know what, I'm going to name it. And the name that I named it means this, that God has made room for us. That God has divinely intervened and made room for the revival that's about to hit Apache Junction, Arizona. Come on, you're not going to have enough seats in this building for the revival that God intends for Apache Junction. Hear me in the Holy Ghost. I come with the word of God that you better start digging for revival because revival's already here. It's not coming. You don't have to pray for it anymore. You just got to stand and believe it's here. Yes. Come on. Glory to God. Can we clap our hands unto heaven? Isaac says, I'm willing to get dirty for revival. I'm willing to get dirty. See, this shovel might look like an ordinary shovel to you, but to me, it's, it's a symbol of prayer. See, we take the story of Isaac, and Isaac went through arguments of the enemy, trying to argue over territory, and he went with contention. But no matter what, Isaac just kept on digging. He kept on believing that God was going to make enough space for the herds and the sheep that God was going to give him. That's what the, the word herds mean in that context. Feet. Yes. God has given you a pastor that believes for revival. That's been praying for revival. But God says, I'm gonna about to make room in 2023 for the revival that I'm going to send to Apache Junction. You get ready because God's about to give you a hundredfold revival in Apache Junction. There's the, come on, I'm telling you in the Holy Ghost. You do not have enough seats in this sanctuary for the revival that God wants to give you. But the question I'm here to tell you in the Holy Ghost uh, and to ask you in the Holy Ghost, are you willing to keep on praying? Yeah, that's right. that's a question. When you don't see it. Are you willing to keep on praying? Are you willing to keep on digging? I know you might be hitting dirt from the beginning, but if you just keep on digging, I've seen in the Holy Ghost a well of living water in the Spirit. Are you willing to keep on fasting for revival? Well, we've been fasting and praying in 2022, and we, we haven't seen exactly what God intended. But I got news for you. You're not in 22 anymore. You're in the year of 2023. This is a new year. And God wants you to know that he's about to put a well in the spirit for you in this city. And there's about to be a well for every soul that is thirsty. Yes. Yes. Pastor Strader, it wasn't a coincidence that those ladies just walked off off the street on Saturday and came into the sanctuary. You better get ready for more. You better get see. They weren't hungry for t for physical food. No, there was a hunger in their spirit. There was a thirst in their spirit. The Bible says, "Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. They shall be filled." See, they had a hunger in their spirit. They had a thirst, in, and when they were walking by, they felt a well. That was being digged in 2022. Yes. 
From the hours that you've been spent praying and the hours that you spent fasting, God says, I've seen every prayer that you prayed as a congregation. I've seen every day that you fasted as a congregation. Hear the word of the Lord. I'm putting up a well in the spirit. I'm going to establish a spiritual well for every home that is thirsty, for every drug addict that is thirsty, for every prostitute that is thirsty. They're going to find water in this congregation. God's going to establish a spiritual well. You better get ready for drug addicts to walk off the streets and come into this congregation because they're not going to look like you and I. They're going to be tatted down from the floor up. They're not going to look like you and I. But can I tell you that's how revival looks. They're not going to smell like you and I. They're going to smell like marijuana. But but what God sees, God doesn't see them as drug addicts. God sees them as a soul winner. God sees them as an intercessor. God sees them as a preacher. God sees them anointed. That's That's the revival that God intends for Apache Junction. That's the revival that God intends for your home. I know you might have some backslidden kids. But in 2023, you hear the word of the Lord. There's going to be a well that is planted in the spirit that your kids are no longer going to hunger and thirst for drugs. But there's going to be a supernatural hunger that God puts inside of them. That no matter where they go, nothing will be able to satisfy them but the wells of living water. Jesus said, through your belly shall flow rivers of living water. This is what he spoke of the Holy Ghost. Wells of living water. Not dead water, but living. If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you got living water flowing through you. When you allow that water, when you allow the flow of the Holy Ghost uh, to flow in you and through you, uh, that's when the well becomes contagious. Uh, You ought to make it up in your mind in 2023 uh, that your home's going to be a home uh, where the well's going to be established. Uh, When your kids walk in the house uh, and they're loaded on drugs, uh, they're going to get uncomfortable. Why? Because there's a well that's established in their home. Uh, They're going to get uncomfortable. They're going to be uncomfortable because the revival that God has established Established in the spirit. Glory to God. Can we clap our hands unto God? (laughs) Glory, glory, glory. I feel in the Holy Ghost that God wants to establish a spiritual well. A spiritual well that whosoever will, let him come and drink from this. We are living in a world. I'm going to make it personal. You are living in a city. Right now, where people are hungry for what you have. You don't know how many times I went to bed with a knife under my pillow, willing, uh, was at any minute ready to commit suicide uh, because I was so sick and tired of the lifestyle that I was living. Uh, and God spoke to me last night when I was in prayer, uh, uh, Pastor Schrader, and God told me uh, there's people that are sick and tired of the life that they are living, but they're looking for a real well. Uh, they're looking for a living well, not a dry well. Amen. Second Peter says there's wells without no water. But I'm preaching to a congregation that you got water in your well. You got substance in your well. Glory to God. There's people that are hungry and thirsty for God. And God's going to use you to reach them. Amen. God's going to use you as you keep on digging and you keep on praying for revival. God says, I'm going to establish them as a lighthouse in this city. As I was praying, God led me to do a little research on a passy junction. 38,000 people in this city. 38,000 people. Number one religion is Catholicism. 14, 14.2% of people believe in idolatry. You know what that tells me? They're looking for something real. They're looking for, they, 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 they want to believe. But they're looking for a well that is running. They're looking for a well that is not empty. They're looking for a well that's been dug by prayer and by fasting. They're looking for something that you and I have. Amen. Yes. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They're looking for what you and I have. They're looking. The second number one, second religion is baptism. 
9.2% are Baptist. But you know what that tells me? They're already one step closer to the well. There's going to be Mormons that walk in here in 2023. There's going to be Catholics that walk in here in 2023. Yeah, they've, been living, they've been living that life for all their life. But can I tell you, in 2023, the well that I'm talking about is going to supersede our minds. It's going to supersede our thoughts. Why? Because the Bible says his ways are above your ways and his thoughts are above your thoughts. What does that mean? That means God's process. Is it our process? Amen. When you follow the man of God, God says, okay, I will give you what you've been praying for. I will give you what you've been fasting for. There's going to be Baptists that walk in here that's been praying for the infilling of the Holy Ghost. That's been praying uh, for the revelation of the name of Jesus. And guess what? There's going to be a well that's been digged that's going to be, that's going to have water, that's going to have substance. uh, And they're going to come in and say, hey, I don't feel this at my church. Uh, I don't get to experience this at my church. What are you guys doing different? No, 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 no. It's not what we've been doing different. It's what we've been doing. We follow the principle and the formula of the first century that it's about prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, can we lift up our hands and pray in the Holy Ghost? The Bible says when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you build up your most holy faith. When you don't know what to say, the Spirit of God prays for your infirmities. He prays for your weakness when you begin to speak in that heavenly language. Come on, I wonder if we can do that for a few minutes. Amen. Come on, if you need the Holy Ghost and you want the Holy Ghost, come on, you don't got to pay for it. All you got to do is lift up your hands and God can fill you with the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on, lift up your voice right now. I feel a moving of the Holy Ghost. I feel a prophetic anointing that just walked in this building. That God's about to stir revival. Hell noticed this church. Hell has seen this church. But God says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You're wondering why hell fought you in 2022. Because hell recognizes in the spirit that there's a well being digged. You're wondering why hell fought your marriage in 2022. Can I tell you, in 2023, God is going to give you authority over every spirit of discord and division and contention. Why? Because you're making up in your mind today that we're going to dig for revival. That we're going to pray for revival. For me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. For me and my house, we're going to see revival. Come on, lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Pray up the pray in the Holy Ghost. Build up your most holy faith. Glory to God for the fire of the Holy Ghost being kindled right now. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Peter says, I see wells without no water. What I see, what I saw in prayer this week was empty religion. This city is filled with empty religion with no substance and no ethnicity. It's not real. They got a well, but there's no water. But this church has a well with water. God says, I'm going to send people off the streets to drink from that well. I'm going I'm to pack out this house that it's the will of God that my house may be filled. But it's, you got to go to the highways uh, and the byways and tell them uh, that we got the real thing. Uh, come on. Uh, I, I'm going to dig the wells that my father digged. Amen. Uh, I'm going to dig. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to make new wells. I'm going to dig old wells. Uh, that means the formula never changed. Amen. Uh, that prayer still works. Yeah. Fasting still works. Yeah. Ancient landmarks still work. That means that if you believe in one God, you do as well. Why? Because the devils believe uh, and they tremble. The apostolic doctrine.
doctrine is still real that a man must be born of the water and of the spirit and they must be born of the spirit what does that sound like whoever whoever is filled with the spirit that comes a sound what is that sound that's a heavenly language that when you begin to be filled with the Holy Ghost the Bible says you will begin to speak in a language that you do not know as the spirit of God gives you the utterance we still believe in Acts 2.38. Right. Right. See, Isaac, Isaac didn't dig new wells. He dug old wells that were covered up. Yeah. What he was saying is that the formula doesn't change. Sometimes it just takes prayer and fasting to dig some old wells. Come on. This church hasn't seen the greater days yet. Pastor Strader, I feel this in the Holy Ghost that there's greater to come in 2023. It's the will of God that every seat in this sanctuary to be filled. As you lead this congregation, God's going to give you the direction and the word for this city. That you are a lighthouse set up upon this city that cannot be healed. There's a well being stirred in the spirit. If you hear me, hear the word of the Lord. That there's going to be a living well that's going to flow through this city. Starting in this lighthouse. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Watch what happens when there's a well that's digged by prayer. John chapter 4. Jesus is walking to Jerusalem and he says, you know what? I got to make a pit stop. The disciples said, where are you going? I'm going through Samaria. Yeah. Well, we could just go around it. Well, why are you going to stop in Samaria? Why? Because there's somebody's hungry. There's somebody thirsty for what I have to offer. Yes. Yes. What does Jesus find a woman that has fallen into a, a, adultery? A woman that was condemned by her city. He finds her at a well. What well? Well, she tells us what well. This is the well that my father's Jacob digged. Ancient wells. A woman at a well that was hungry and thirsty for water, but not that water. Jesus says, I, I see somebody that is thirsty for me. And I got to make a pit stop. Because God cannot ignore where there's a well. Because the people that surrounds us, a well was always centered around a community. Remember that. A well was always, in, in, in biblical times, wells were always centered around communities. It wasn't just for their people, but it was, it was for every other community around them. The well that I'm talking about is not a physical well, but I'm talking about a well in the spirit that every community around Apache Junction is going to hear about the revival that God is doing in this congregation. And they're going to say, you know what? I got to go and see what's going on in Apache Junction. I got to see why they're knocking down the walls to expand, to make room for the revival. I want to see how God just blessed them with new land, pay for, debt free. I want to see what God is doing. Well, I want to see the well that they're going for the Holy Ghost. I want to see how they got that free land to build a bigger church, a revival church. I hear me, church. I'm talking about a well that is digged by prayer and fasting. Glory to God. Glory to God. The well. This is the place that we worship. What are you talking about, Jesus? He looked at her and said, if you drink from this well... You're going to thirst again. But the water that I give, you will never thirst again. When people walk in hungry and thirsty for a move of God. They're going to find it. And they're not going to walk out thirsty or hungry. Because the Bible says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. The Bible says, Jesus is righteousness. So what Luke was saying, what Matthew was saying is, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after Jesus. For they shall be filled. There's about to be a hunger released out of this congregation into this city. 
that's going to wake up prodigals. That's going to wake up backsliders. Uh, they're going to wake up. Come on, I'm talking about a revival of whales today. Uh, but are you willing to dig like never before? Uh, are you willing to fast for revival like never before? Uh, come on, are you willing to pray uh, until something breaks? Uh, I be, are you still willing to pray until something happens? Glory to God. Think about our elders. Do I have any elders in here? Thank you so much for the years that you serve the Lord. Hey, man, I give honor to you today. And you could probably testify uh, with me that back in the day, uh, they, they didn't have artificial revival. They had the real thing. But you know how it happened? A 10-day fast was normal. 24 hours of prayer was normal. All night prayer meetings was normal. Can I tell you, we got to get back to the basics of establishing a well in the spirit. That if we're going to see revival, and I believe God wants to give it to you, that it's going to come by prayer. And it's going to come by fasting. It's going to come by worship. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. If you got backslidden kids, can you raise your hand? Amen. Glory. Glory, glory, glory. In Jesus' name. Because of your faithfulness, God's going to honor. God's already moving. When you don't see it, God's moving on your kids. Because what's, what's already started in the spirit will manifest in the natural. What does that mean? I remember coming home so drunk, Pastor Strader. I don't know how I got home. I would go on three or four day drinking binges. It's 11.33. Trying to hurry. But I, I, I just felt like the Holy Ghost. I remember getting home three or four o'clock in the mornings. Going on three to four day drinking binges. Loaded up on crystal meth, crack cocaine. But I can remember walking in and hearing my mom pray. And I would get mad. I walk in my room and shut the door and she would come in and say, son, I've been praying for you. And I could just hear the war of intercessory prayer cover the room and, and the spirits that had my mind so confused. Uh, I would get angry and I would get mad because I didn't want to hear those prayers. Hey, something inside of me just didn't want to hear the prayers of a righteous man uh, because a prayer of a righteous individual is villain much. Uh, and something began to happen. Amen. I began to get angry. And I'll start slamming things and slamming my door. Why? Because things that are happening in the natural are imitating of what's going on in the spirit. Angels were moving in when she was praying. You're missing that. If you're wondering why your marriage feels like it's getting attacked and things are getting crazier before they get better, why? Because angels are already on the move. If you're wondering why your kids or your spouse uh, is getting more violent and more crazy, why? Because angels are already on the move. Uh, God's already on the move on your problem and on your situation. And things in the natural will get worse before they get better. Yeah. But it doesn't neglect the fact that God's already moving. Yes. Yes. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory, glory, glory. Can we lift up our hands and talk to the Lord right now? Glory, glory, glory. Are you ready for a revival that you never saw before? Are you ready for a revival that you cannot even fathom or imagine? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. I feel a movement of the Holy Ghost right now. That someone's going to make it up in their mind in 2023. We're going to start digging again. Praying again. Believing again. Fasting again. I know 2022 was, probably wasn't the best year. But a greater is to come. Greater is to come. Glory. I want every eyes closed. Nobody looking around. If you have never spoken in tongues, if you have never been filled with the Holy Ghost, can you lift up your hands? Nobody's looking, so you're not on the spot. If you have never spoken in tongues before and you want the Holy Ghost, can you just lift up your hands? Amen. Nobody looking around. Amen, amen. If you have never spoken in tongues and you want the Holy Ghost, can you just lift up your hands? You don't have to be scared of it. It's a promise that God is going to live inside of you. 
Amen. If you have never been baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, can you lift up your hands? Amen. Amen. Nobody looking around. So you can raise your hand. You're not on the spot. Come on. I know God's been working on your heart. I feel in the Holy Ghost. You might feel scared. You might feel, you might feel, uh, well, I don't know how it's going to be. I don't know how, how it's going to experience. But I, I just feel like God wants to fill somebody with the gift of the Holy Ghost. I feel like somebody's about to make a commitment today that I might have been baptized in the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. But today I'm going to be baptized in the only saving name of Jesus Christ. Come on, if you have never been baptized in Jesus' name, can you raise your hand? Okay. Come on. Can we lift up our hands now all together? All together. Let's just pray and talk to the Lord. I'm closing. I'm closing. I'm closing. This is what I feel. This is what I feel. Pastor Strader, if I can have you and your wife come up in the middle, is that okay? The biggest enemy of revival is discord. The greatest element of revival is unity. The anointing that, that is on this man of God and this sister, God has, it's the anointing to lead this congregation into a greater revival. I don't know how 22 was. I'm just telling you what I've picked up in prayer this week. That God is going to give a greater anointing to go deeper. To go deeper than you ever imagined. To dig wells that, that were previous digged by previous generations. There's going to be wells that are digged in 2023. That is going to be reopened. And there's going to be a, a spirit of unity. And in that spirit of unity, there's going to birth revival. And revival is going to spread out from this congregation. Anybody that is in leadership, this is what I want. I want you to come and stand behind this man of God and this woman of God. Anybody that is in leadership, you want to face my way. A lot of them in Sunday school. Okay. Okay, whoever is in here, if you're in leadership, you'll represent the leadership. Amen. Amen. They're working in the kingdom. That's what it's all about. Amen. 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 What you're conveying by coming behind the man of God and the woman of God is that you're willing to, willing to follow them through the cost of revival. You're willing to dig with them, pray with them, and fast with them until a greater revival bursts uh, in this city. Ladies, I want you to pray for, for your for first lady. Man, I want you to pray for you. You're representing all the, all the leadership right now. I'm telling you, there's about to be a spirit of unity. That spreads in this congregation. That's going to give birth for revival. Come on church. Can you stand and pray with us today? That we're willing to do what it takes. To dig the old fashioned wells of revival. I pray for unity in this congregation. I come against every old spirit of discord. I take authority in the name of Jesus. That there will be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus.